Hey, Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News for Wednesday, January 26, 2022. Stand up for your country. So the big story today was uh, Justice Breyer announcing his retirement at age 83. So he's a liberal judge, not a loon, certainly not like Sotomayor, um, but he's out. And now um, President Biden gets to pick a nominee for the Supreme Court. So I'm going to wait till tomorrow so I can go over the nominees. Uh, Mr. Biden's already said he wants to appoint a black woman. I want to go over the candidates and see what their records are. Um, And we will have a full report tomorrow. Ukraine, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo tonight. So there is division in the Republican Party and among the conservative pundits about what to do with Ukraine and Putin. So as you know, um, Vladimir Putin the dictator of Russia, there's, you know, everybody does what they say or what he says or they get killed. So that's it. Um, uh, Stalin pretty much, he's not as bad as Stalin, but he, he's, you know, trying. So Putin is, you know, massed uh, troops on the border of Ukraine. He doesn't have to. There's no reason for him to do it. He got away with uh, seizing Crimea, which was part of Ukraine. It's now part of Russia under um, President Obama. Now, there's a map, okay? So Belarus, that's a Putin satellite. And then you got Poland, you got Romania, Moldova, okay, all around Ukraine. So why is Putin doing this? A couple of reasons. Um, He wants to drive a wedge through the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Because NATO is the main opponent in Europe to Russian expansion. So ultimately, Putin wants to put together the old Soviet Union. He wants to dominate the countries that the Soviet Union ran. And he's got Kazakhstan. He's got Belarus. He's got a few right now. He wants more. Ukraine's a big one. All right. So Ukraine's not going to go with Putin like Belarus did. Um, They don't like him. So you have to take it by force. But the threat of war, which is what Putin is doing, he's threatening war, whether it be military or economic, that doesn't go down that well in Europe because Europe, they're not warriors there. So he wants to divide. He's already got Germany, which depends on Russian uh, fuel, you know, the pipeline going through and natural gas and all of that. Germany depends on that. He's already got them cleaved out of NATO. All right, Germany not going to go up against Russia, no matter what Russia does. All right, they're just not. But France and Great Britain, the two powers in the European Union, they're anti-Putin. They don't like him at all. Now, Biden Everybody goes, oh, Biden, 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 Biden. Biden doesn't have any wiggle room at all here. Because if Biden were to do nothing and allow Putin to take Ukraine by force, that would make Afghanistan look like D-Day. So Biden, he, I don't even think he could govern. So he has to slap the harsh economic sanctions on Putin, which I have recommended for years. Basically cut off all banking. So Russia could not use Western and U.S. banks. Okay, the dollar, the U.S. dollar is the denomination of worldwide currency. Already, the Russia stock market is tottering, as I reported earlier this week, and the ruble is losing value very quickly. So the world knows that Russia, even though it has oil and natural gas, is going to get really hurt by economic sanctions, even if Germany doesn't participate. Now, Hannity and I debated this. Hannity doesn't believe me, okay? On his radio program today, we had a pretty lively debate. We posted it on BillOReilly.com so you can hear Hannity's point of view. And that brings me back to the cleave among Republicans. I'm not a Republican. I'm a registered independent. But in the Republican Party and among the pundits on the right, there is not unanimity. 
Okay, roll the tape. No, whether we like it or not, sometimes uh, actors, whether it's China or Russia, may take actions that we don't like, but that don't directly affect our national security. Like the 1956 time when the Soviet Union invaded in Hungary. No one liked that, but it didn't directly affect our national security, and we didn't take military action or make it worse. Let's punish Putin now, and why don't we do a lend-lease bill like Senator Cornyn has, doing for the Ukrainians what we did for the British uh, in the early stages of World War II, endless weapons to, to make sure there are a bunch of dead Russians if you invade Ukraine. Okay, so the weapons are going. I don't know if they're going to be endless, but um, Lindsey Graham wants to punish Putin now. That would be a mistake. Uh, You don't want to exacerbate the situation because I still believe that Putin might not go into Ukraine. I'll tell you why in a moment. The first speaker that you heard is Colonel Danny Davis, a military guy. And um, he doesn't want, you you know, he goes, "Ah, you know, you should let him do it. And we don't really want to do anything. Well, with all due respect to the colonel, if Putin marches in, takes Ukraine with no punishment, then Taiwan's gone. Because you know China and Iran, both watching this real closely, okay? So you can kiss Taiwan goodbye if Ukraine goes. And the whole world then would start to lose confidence in the United States and, of course, NATO. Nobody have any confidence in them at all that they could stand up to anything. So this psychological thing would change the entire world and give the advantage to the bad guys, Putin and Xi in China. So Biden's got to know this, I, I guess, as far as he can absorb information. He has to know that it's his neck in the noose. I mean, he blows this one. There's no coming back. I mean, Biden's on the edge now. You all know that. He's not going to be able to run for president again. There's no way he runs for president again. Or he just can't. And the Democrats know that. They'll never tell you that, but they know it. But then if he were to allow Putin to take over Ukraine, oh, my God. Because you have a powerful Eastern Bloc now, Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic, they're all dependent on NATO's protection. And Latvia, Lithuania, all the Baltic states, by treaty, we have to defend them. Putin walks away, he can't. I mean, Biden walks away, he can't. Now, if Putin invades, it's it for Putin. And this is where Hannity and I disagree. Because as I mentioned, the Russian economy now is tottering. Russia is a poor country. Yeah, it's got all the stuff. It's like Venezuela. It's got all the oil and all of this, but it doesn't filter down to the folks. Folks don't have anything in Russia. They're poor. Okay? And they'll be more poor with economic sanctions. Poorer. It's an oligarchy there. Only Putin and his buddies and the military get the money. It's like Cuba. Okay? Only the top echelon and the military get paid. The rest of the people... They don't have much, and they're not happy. They don't really like Putin. I mean, they respond to him because they fear him, but that's not a prosperous country. Could be, but Putin wants to be Stalin light. That's what he wants to be. That's why he's doing it. doesn't have to do it. NATO's not invading Russia. The United States has no interest in that. All right? We want to be economic partners with them. So Putin, is he a madman? I'm not sure. But if he goes into Ukraine, as I told Hannity, then there'll be a guerrilla war against Russia on the part of the Ukrainians. Bombings every day. It'll just be a bloodbath, just like it was in Afghanistan when the Soviets invaded that in 1980. And we'll get to that in a little while. So remember, Soviet Union went into Afghanistan and tried to take it over, and it was body bags coming back to Russia all day long because the Afghans fought a guerrilla war against them, and the Ukrainians would too. They don't want to be under Putin's thumb. So anyway, he's very complicated, nasty, influencing uh, geopolitics and all of our economies now. I still think that Putin is shrewd enough to know in the long run does not help Putin. Doesn't help him. Not going to gain a lot of fans inside Russia or outside Russia by doing this. 
and he's going to have unintended consequences all day long. We'll see. Could be wrong. On this one, I could be wrong. Okay, sometimes, like when I tell you Biden's not going to run again, I'm not wrong. Putin, I could be wrong. Okay, so President Biden scheduled today at a meeting about Build Back Better, blah, 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 blah. And then he uh, signed an executive order to make uh, sexual misconduct an offense in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. That's what he did. All right. So new poll out on politics. Both political parties were asked by NBC News. The poll looks OK to me. Uh, 30 Democrat, 28 Republican, 35 Independent, 1,000 adults. Um, do you feel positive or negative against the Republican Party? The number is net positive 34, net negative 44. OK, how about the Democratic Party? Positive, negative, net positive 33, 1% below Republicans, net negative 48. That's a big negative against the Democrats. That's NBC. Um, and... Uh, the reason the Democratic Party is doing poorly in the polls now is because of the progressive left. They are the face of the Democratic Party. No longer are moderate Democrats the face. It's progressive left. Nancy Pelosi says she'll run again, 81 years old. Uh, you know how I feel about her. If you don't read the message of the day on BillOReilly.com, I spell it out. I think she's an evil woman. Uh, that's about as harsh as I can say about anyone. I back it up on the message. I've gone over it before. I don't want to be redundant and repetitive, but the woman is causing a lot of damage uh, in this country. So message of the day on BillOReilly.com. Anybody can read that. You don't have to be a premium or concierge member. You can just go over and read it. We post every morning. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are eight reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Stable monthly cash flow payouts with double-digit targeted bonus returns. They strategically develop in lower-risk, high-demand neighborhoods. Prime new construction is short on supply and high on demand. Diversification is safety from stock market risk. They have a short and long-term strategy for returns today and down the road. Specifically designed pandemic-hardened buildings. They are 15-year industry leaders with a proven track record. So if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, please start your due diligence at nria.net or call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. All right, Department of Justice continues to pound the drum that there's far right wing terrorism in this country. And 101 million, not 100 million, 101 million, have been allocated to combat far right terrorism. And the guy in charge of that is uh, Garland, uh, the Attorney General of the United States. There's all America. We love him, right? So, okay, I, I'm a simple man. Just, Mr. Attorney General, tell us what groups you're talking about, where they are, and what they're doing. That's all. If you're going to spend $100 million taxpayer dollars to try to find them or neutralize them or do whatever you want to do with them, let us know who they are. We know Antifa. We know Black Lives Matter. Is this the Proud Boys? Is this, what is this? Don't you think they should come out in the Justice Department instead of every two minutes, all right, when terrorism's coming, okay, who, where? Back it up. What have they done? What are they doing? Generally, I just don't know. I mean, I, I'd like to know. Ten Oath Keepers, that's a group, that pled not guilty to sedition charges related to January 6th, the Capitol riot. So they pled not guilty, including the leader, Stuart Rhodes. I didn't even know who that guy was. Okay? Now, I'm looking at the uh, complaint from the Justice Department against the Oath Keepers, 10 of them. And the Justice Department says that they were trying to overthrow the government of the United States. Okay. I, 
I, I'm going to follow it. It's trial, but I don't think these people are going to be convicted of sedition. I mean, you're going to have to show beyond any reasonable doubt that they were involved in a conspiracy. I think the Justice Department has somebody on the inside. I do believe they have an informer in the group. And that'll be their strong card. Tough to convict anybody on that, but we're keeping an open mind. We don't want anybody trying to overthrow the uh, government of the United States. All right, let's get to the border. A whole bunch of stuff on the border. And you're not going to get this anywhere else. Well, maybe you get it. I doubt it. If you do see this reportage I'm about to give you anywhere else, let me know. Okay? Okay, number one. Migrant apprehensions on the southern border up 139% from December 2020. Okay? So 2021, you had, uh, let me get the numbers here, you had 170,000 migrants apprehended. And obviously it doesn't count the ones who got away. Then in 2020, when Trump was president, you had um, 71,000. So it went from 71 under Trump to 170,000 apprehensions under Biden. Now, that's a pretty big leap. Okay, and again, this is just apprehensions. Now, out of those 170,000 in December, 51,000 disappeared. Even after they were apprehended, they're gone. Nobody knows where they are. Well, we saw a video of some of them getting on buses at the expense of the taxpayer. So I think the Biden administration is letting them go. I'm, pr- I'm almost positive they're letting them go. Now, of the 170,000, 109,000 single adults, 43,500 families, 12,000 children, unaccompanied children. Okay. Most of those kids are teenagers coming in. Heroin seizures, December 21, up 53%. But this is interesting. Fentanyl seizures, down 37%. Know why? Because people in the United States are making fentanyl now. They're not paying the Mexican cartels for it. They're making it here, just like methamphetamine. Okay? Remember that TV show? Um, So that's what I think is going on there. Now, um, out of 100,000 migrants, illegal aliens that were tracked by ICE and told to show up for a court hearing, 47,000 failed to check in. That's half. They didn't show up. Okay, this is last year, I guess. All right, and um, now the Border Patrol says we're going to put ankle monitors on them before we let them go. Why are you letting them go? They should be going back to Mexico. The Remain in Mexico policy. Remember? Federal judge ordered Biden to resume that. Why are you letting them go? Or are they going to install a phone app? What does that mean? They just throw the phone away. And if they get the electric monitor on their ankle, they'll just cut it off. Have somebody cut it off. What, what are you doing? Okay. Now, the Biden administration, uh, according to Homeland Security, has only enrolled 300 migrants out of the millions that have tried to cross under, in Biden's first year, only 300 and remain in Mexico. These, they're slow walking it. They're, not, they're just not doing it. Now, you're going to write me, well, how can I get away with this? Well, who's going to do anything about it? Who? Justice Department isn't. Homeland Security isn't. Biden runs them. The only person or people who can do anything about it is you the voter, the people, in November, get them out. Get them out. Because if Trump were still president or the Republicans control both houses of Congress, it wouldn't be happening. It's just such a scandal. It is such a scandal. Okay, so um, a group called Transparency International, there's a million of these groups, 
They put out the most corrupt nations on the planet and the least corrupt nations. Most corrupt, right on the screen. South Sudan, that's the most corrupt nation, okay? Syria, Somalia, Venezuela, Yemen, North Korea, Afghanistan, Libya, Equatorial Guinea, Turkmenistan, Congo, Burundi, Sudan itself, Nicaragua, Haiti. They're the most corrupt, okay? Least corrupt nations on earth, according to the Transparency International Group. There they are. Denmark, least corrupt in the world. Finland, New Zealand, Norway, Singapore, Sweden, Switzerland, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Germany, UK, Hong Kong, Canada, Iceland, Ireland. You'll notice the USA not in there because America came in 28th on the least corrupt. And you know why? Because we are corrupt. We are. Let's admit it. Here's an example. Dark money. You know what dark money is? Billions of dollars are pouring into this country to fix elections and do other dastardly things. Here is the definition of dark money. Cash from people or organizations whose names are not known or revealed that may be connected to illegal or harmful activities. That's dark money. And it's, we're awash in it. Now, you know about Mark Zuckerberg, the Facebook guy, pouring $450 million or whatever it is into the last presidential election. That money went into counties to gin up the Democratic vote. What Zuckerberg did was not dark money. It was perfectly legal what he did. In my opinion, it was not ethical, hiring people to go into nursing homes and everything out to tell people how to vote. I don't think that's ethical. I think it should be illegal, but it's not. Can't do it in a polling place, but mail-in votes all day long. So that's not dark money. But other people see Zuckerberg. He told everybody about his donations, where they went. They went to two organizations that set up all this big con. So he stayed within the confines of the law. Others don't. They chip the money in, but you don't know who's it going to or where it's going. I know this because I've dealt with it in my own life. I've dealt with this. in a, Big money attacked me, dark money. Someday I'll tell you about it. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed everything is getting more expensive. We are in the biggest economic crisis since 2008. With a government that's printing trillions of dollars, Consumer prices at the highest we've seen in 30 years. Inflation certainly here. And if the government continues its out-of-control printing and spending, the dollar could continue its freefall and lose its coveted role as the world's reserve currency. While paper money will eventually have a shrinkage in value, there are real tangible things that will always maintain value. So how do you protect your money, your retirement, your savings? American Hartford Gold can show you how to hedge your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. All it takes to get started is a short phone call, and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to 2500 bucks of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call them now, 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. All right, here is the final thought of the day. Low talkers, I, I think it's getting worse. You talk to somebody, you can't understand that. And Joe Biden, at times, is a low talker. Roll it. How can I say this uh, in a public forum? Uh, 
I think that he is dealing with what I believe he thinks is the most tragic thing that's happened. Now, when you have a conversation with anyone, maybe you're an, a low talker. First of all, you look them in the eye. You don't stare at them like this. You look them in the eye, look away, look back. Okay? And you're apart, especially in the age of COVID, you know, at least three feet, four, five feet. And you speak up, deep breath, and pronounce the words. I can't tell you how many times I walk into a restaurant, right? I'm going to make you make you. Madam, I can't hear you. I don't know what you're saying. And it's not accents. I'm pretty good at that. I can pick that up. They don't speak loudly enough. You slow talk about that. So sometimes you have to be almost rude and say, can you please speak up? I got a little hearing problem. That's all you have to say. All right. Then I feel sorry for you or something. Don't be a low talker. It drives me nuts. Thanks for watching us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. In a world that seems to have lost its way, who can you count on? AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. That's who. Now, more than two million members strong, AMAC believes in the values that we constitutional people care about. AMAC represents courage, faith, and reason in these trying times. They stand for national solvency in a time of runaway debt, national security and sovereignty over unchecked borders, they believe in the sanctity of life. These next two years are going to be tough. Now is the time to join AMAC. AMAC also gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts that will save you money, including AMAC's bi-monthly magazine delivered right to your mailbox. So please join today at amac.us. That's amac.us. AMAC is better, better for you, better for America. Bill O'Reilly is back on TV and only on The First. No spin news. Every weeknight at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on The First.